is your Monday Info Hub. We start the week with the following big stories. President Granger urges Lindeners to make the mining town into a center of commerce. Business minister pleased with young entrepreneurship. Manganese mining to increase Matthews Ridge development. Ministerial team visits the noble Bob Douglas drill ship as production for first oil in 2020 kicks off. And airport expansion represents value for money. The details after this. Paying the right amount of tax helps provide a good credit rating. A good credit rating is a requirement for getting financing. You could use your good credit rating to get loans to expand your business, buy a house or car, or pay for your university tuition. Take advantage of the tax amnesty and pay no interest or penalties from now to June 30. Invest in yourself. Pay your taxes. A message from the Ministry of Finance and the Guyana Revenue Authority. In our lead story this evening, we begin by telling you that Lindeners were urged by President David Granger to make the town into a center of commerce. Info Hub was in the mining town for the Linden Town Week. Delicia Haynes brings us this report. The Linden Trade Fair and Exposition was officially launched on Friday, April 27. As he officially opened the trade fair, President Granger described the community as the gateway to the rest of Guyana and urged that Linden become an example of commerce. This exhibition is an opportunity for innovation so that we stop being hewers of wood and become manufacturers of furniture. This exhibition is an opportunity for us to be innovative, to get out of the old mindset of just mining and producing raw materials. Vice President of the Linden Chamber of Industry, Commerce and Development, Linden Young, spoke of the event's prior success. We have seen success stories from being a part of events like the one we are presently engaged in, because we would have seen our local products on shelves in supermarkets in and outside of Linden. I would like to echo some words from the Minister of State, Mr. Joseph Harmon, in his message last Sunday at the opening ceremony of the Linden Town Week 2018, that he would like to see the Made in Linden brand on products on the shelves in supermarkets in and outside of Guyana. The Linden Exposition and Trade Fair 2018 ran from April 27 to 29 and was hosted by the Linden Chamber of Industry, Commerce and Development with support from the Linden Mayor and Town Council. For Info Hub, Delicia Haynes. A high-level ministerial team yesterday visited the Nobel Bob Douglas drill ship to have a first-hand look at the deep-sea operations and to officially welcome the captain and crew to Guyana. Stacey Carmichael has the details. Speaking on behalf of the team, Minister of Natural Resources Raphael Trotman thanked the crew for their work in fast-tracking Guyana to first oil in 2020 and said the team was impressed with the emphasis on safety. The drill ship has begun work on a production phase and is on a three-year contract which will run through to 2021. Minister of State Joseph Harmon, who is part of the ministerial team, said at his recent post-cabinet press conference that the arrival of the noble Bob Douglas signals the escalation of developments in the industry. It was noted that this ship is significantly larger and more versatile than the Stena Caron that is used primarily to drill exploratory wells. The noble Bob Douglas will be involved in the drilling of injection and extractive wells. Minister of Finance Winston Jordan, Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson and Minister of Business Dominic Gaskin were also part of the ministerial team. The team was joined by Director of Public Information Imran Khan, ExxonMobil Country Manager Rod Henson, ExxonMobil Upstream Manager Doug McGee and Noble's Drilling Superintendent Curtis Chandler. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. Still with oil and gas, the buzz continue over the many benefits to be had from this emerging sector. Four Guyanese employed on the noble Bob Douglas drill ship said they are thrilled at the prospects ahead. Here is Alexis Rodney with that report. During a ministerial visit to the drill ship on Sunday, InfoHub caught up with four of the 23 Guyanese who were able to clinch jobs on the vessel some 88 miles off Georgetown. They are delighted at the experiences, they say, are setting them on a path of upward mobility. This means um, for me and my family, I think is a sacrifice we have to make. Um, everyone make a sacrifice in life for the better. And I think this, this was a good choice for me. Exposure, experience, 
different things and it's kind of challenging new environment, new stuff, but at the end of the day, you learn new things. It's getting you geared and you're getting new, you can get new position. You, couldn't, you wouldn't come here as a cook and stay, remain as a cook, you get other areas that you can develop in. Primarily I was, uh, wanted to be a part in the offshore sector, oil and gas industry, and I had some experience in, in what they were you know, looking for, which was uh, hospitality. And the fact that it's happening in Guyana, you know, I mean, I, I could have had this job in the next country, but primarily and most importantly, uh, because of the recent discovery of oil in Guyana, I was like, why not? I, you know, I mean, this is an opportunity for Guyanese, so I wanted to be a part of it. I heard about the job, and I applied, and I got through. Well, my hitch began on the 4th of April, and it ends uh, on the 7th of May. So. The noble Bob Douglas hovers above the 13th well being drilled by ExxonMobil in the Starbrook block. Making up the Guyanese contingent on the vessel are 14 persons in the catering operations, four rustabouts, two clerks, one doctor and two logistics support personnel. Alexis Rodney for InfoHub. Residents of Matthews Ridge have been reassured that they will see a boost in infrastructural and other developments with the return of manganese mining. Minister of Natural Resources Raphael Trotman was in the community on Saturday. Crystal Stull has the details. The road is going to be improved. We're going to have to refurbish the hospital. We're going to have to do work um, on other facilities. Mr. Chairman, you uh, should be pleased to know that this entire sub-region is going to be lifted up. Minister Trotman met with residents to update them on the manganese project and to listen to their concerns. Kenneth Jones, resident of Matthews Ridge, said the return of the mining to the community provides much needed employment opportunities. There are a number of young people here who I think need employment and it will be a good opportunity for them to grasp it and fit into some section of the manganese company. Clarice Mendonza, another resident, said she would like to see Guyana Manganese Incorporated assist in the development of the community's health, education, and agriculture sectors. We're not asking for, for not depending on them wholly and solely, but at least they can assist us. Manganese mining began in the regional sub-district some 50 years ago on the Reunion Manganese Incorporated. The return of manganese mining on the Guyana Manganese Incorporated is expected to see some 600 persons in the community and wider region benefiting from employment when production begins in the second quarter of 2019. Crystal Stahl for InfoHub. Business Minister Dominic Gaskin is pleased with young entrepreneurs embracing agro-processing. He was speaking at the opening of Uncapped, the trade expo at Providence. Crystal Stahl joins us again. The business minister also noted the efforts being made by the local manufacturers and producers to improve their products presentation. I think they understand the importance of good packaging. They also have, a, I think, a greater brand awareness than some of us um, older folks. And therefore, that, uh, that comes out in their approach to business. And certainly, I've seen an improvement in the quality of our packaging over the last few years. Exhibitors at the event commended the organizers for creating a platform where they could showcase their products and services to the wider Guyanese public. I think it is an exceptionally great idea for us to display our local products, the products that we have as Guyanese, the unique taste that we have. It's very nice. I think it's a very nice idea that they're actually trying to um, market some of our local produce because um, Ghana has a lot of talent. It's nice, it's a good exposure. I give us the local um, entrepreneurs to market our stuff. The ones that I've visited so far are, are very interesting stuff. They are especially the agriculture part. Marketplace Uncapped is expected to be held in other regions of the country throughout the year. Crystal Stahl for InfoHub. The expansion of the Chedi Jagan International Airport is evidence of good value for money. So says Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson. Delicia Haynes brings us that report. In 2015, when um, the administration, when I uh, assumed the helm of the ministry, we had paid out more money than the percentage of work done. 
if you understand that so, so you mean you are you you paid us 70% of the money and you're only 30% physical progress on the drug. So the first thing the cabinet has said to me is that you can complete the project um, but provided the value, the, the project cost does not increase. Um, to date, save and accept the, um, the two new border bridges that we have, have been able to hold um, to that. In addition, amidst criticisms and calls for the Auditor General's intervention by opposition members of Parliament, Minister Patterson says he welcomes and will support the continued audits of the Auditor General's department. Auditor General audits all, all, all projects um, with government expenditure um, has been. So I do hope and I do encourage him to continue doing his job diligently. Um, he has audited this project um, from its inception, he has, I mean, up to 2017, the, he has audited his project, um, and he will continue to audit the project, and we will provide him with any information that's his job. Members of Parliament, the private sector, and other stakeholders were on Friday last taken on a guided tour of the CJIA to have a first-hand view and assessment of current works. For InfoHub, Delicia Haynes. And finally, the curtains came down on Ghana's observance of Vaccination Week. Public Health Minister Valda Lawrence sought to dispel myths about the human papillomavirus vaccine. The Public Health Minister was speaking at the closing ceremony on Friday in Mokomoka Village, Region 9. We have the responsibility to protect our children, especially our 9 years to 13 year old. We have that right and that responsibility to ensure that they are vaccinated and in so doing that we can ensure that they can live a healthy life without cancer. So let us put aside the myths. Let us put aside the stories. And let us get our girls immunized. When the cancer comes, no myth helps you then. No stories help that child then. The parents are crying. The family is depressed. And everybody is looking for a miracle. UNICEF country representative Paolo Marquis supported the minister's call for the public to be more open to all vaccines, including the HPV vaccine. Unfortunately, um, there are misconceptions about vaccines. There are misconceptions about the effects of vaccines, and there are misconceptions about the fact that vaccine can work or not. We have this mis these are misconceptions because we have proof. Vaccines save lives, save children's lives from preventable diseases every year. This is the 16th year Ministry of Public Health has collaborated with the PAHO WHO to host Vaccination Week in Guyana. This year, as part of the week-long celebration, the ministry chose to highlight its vaccination services countrywide, especially to far-flung communities, particularly those near borders. For InfoHub, Delicia Haynes. Connect with us 24-7 on our website, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and WhatsApp for more details as we bring you updates on what is happening all across Guyana. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. The Ministry of Finance has announced a tax amnesty, effective January 1 to September 30, 2018. This means that you can pay all your outstanding income, property, corporate, capital gains and withholding taxes. File your taxes before June 30, 2018 and all interest and penalties will be waived or file before September 30, 2018 and pay only 50% of the interest and penalties accrued. Invest in your country. Pay your taxes. A message from the Ministry of Finance and the Guyana Revenue Authority.